Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. My name is Peter Macharia. Kwa jina ni Peter Macharia. And Christ is Lord. Na Yesu ni Bwana. I'm grateful that I'm born again this morning. Na furaha kwamba nimeokoka asubuhi ya leo. Because knowing Christ. Kwa sababu kumjua Kristo. I think is the best not I think it is the best thing that happened to my life. Ni jambo jema sana ambalo litaendelea maisha ni mwangu. I have been here for many years. Nimekuwa hapa kwa miaka mingi. Because I joined this church. Maana nilijiunga na kanisa hili in 1999. Mwaka wa 1999. So it has been a journey. Kwa hivyo imekuwa ni safari. I was having in different ministries. Nikihudumu katika idara tofauti. But today, lakini leo hii, I want to take a different position as I speak. Nitachukua sehemu tofauti ndipo nena. Because I'm the chairman of Cornerstone Academy. Kwa sababu mimi ni mwenyekiti wa Cornerstone Academy. Clap for me. Nipigie ni makofi. A chairman deserves to be clapped for. Mwenyekiti anastahili kupigwa makofi. I think if there is a responsibility that really shakes the earth for me. Nafikiria kama kuna wajibu ambao unachangiza ulimwengu kwangu mimi. It is being the chairman of this school. Ni kuwa mwenyekiti wa kodi hili. And I have been in education for many years. And when I say many, there are many years, almost that years to go. But I have been heading in different capacities. By this time, not in mainstream leadership, but more so looking into the governance and the strategic direction of the institution. And I'm happy to work alongside very competent individuals. Like you have seen the principal, the deputy is there, the senior teacher is there, the head of the dean. Please start the three of you. Once again, I know principal you stood and please wave to the congregation. Thank you teachers of Cornerstone. Asa, Where are you? Wa, wa Please start wherever you are. Amazing teachers. You can see and you can be sure others are in different places. Wako sehemu tofauti, tofauti. These people doing a wonderful job. Kazi sana. Excellent stewards. Na ni kazi wa sana. And thank you for the good work that you are doing. Kwa kazi May the Lord bless you as you sit. You have just see, witnessed just a bit of what happens in Cornerstone. The great worshippers are our students. And we have only seen them for a few minutes. You should just try to come here when they are doing the real worship. I don't think there is any other school that you can take your child and get the transformation of what we are seeing. Education for your child is not anything to gabble about. And that's why my interpreter has his child their children here. And I can tell you great things are happening. So you who is thinking of where to take your child this is a place to be. Yesterday we had a cornerstone Saturday. We had a wonderful launch of the, um, the junior school up Mirema. A wonderful moment as we dedicated the school complex and we are sure that the Lord is going to transform every child that shall enter into that place. Cornerstone Academy and Junior School is a place of transformation. Bwana Yesu wa Sifiwe. Today I want us to talk about um, oh, did I say that I have children? I have my father of three girls. I have a young adult, I think turned 23. And I have another one who is 18 or 19. <laughs> and a 16 year old. That tells you, 
and we are grateful to God for what he has done. Redigging the well of stewardship. Redigging the well of stewardship. When a child is born, and God places them in your hands, as a mother or a father, it is because God knows there is no one better to bring up that child than you. And he gives you a responsibility on his own behalf to take care of that child. To provide them the environment to grow. Because bringing up a child it's like taking care of a young plant. When you are gardening, for those of us who are farmers, even if for a long time I have been a farmer of one popo tree, and unfortunately it has died now, <laughs> not because of negligence, but we have eaten enough fruits. But we know that when you are taking care of a young plant, you really must weed. You must water it. You must protect it from harmful predators. Or anything that can destroy your plant. And if you want to get better fruits, you must look for the right fertilizer. The right manure. And create the right in, in environment for that plant. The same thing we are given by God when we take the responsibility of taking care of the young children God brings in our hands. And this is whether you are a teacher or you are a parent, the responsibility nobody has equal measure because you have power over that child. My brother, my nagure, buona sifiwe. <laughs> nice to see my brother here. We served together for many years before he he went to the other side, the, the, the US. And grateful to see you today. I, I have just remembered that one day we were in Ivasha celebrating as men of vision. And a baby was born to my brother Maina Gure. <laughs> and we had to decide we will continue with the activities. <laughs> then brother Apitie, Akiona wife, <laughs> kwa now that's a big girl now. <laughs> because he has done a good job as a, as a, as, as a farmer, or, you know, the one taking care of the child. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> In life, there are many competing priorities. Especially in the times that we are in. One of them is what we have just talked about parenting. Being a wife or a husband. Being a brother or a sister to somebody. Being a relative of extended family. Being a citizen and an employee maybe in a company. And there, and there are so many things that are competing for your time. When I was preparing, I looked at the, one of the books that I have held for quite some time. I have read it a few times. One of the books is called The Long Walk to Freedom. By Nelson Mandela. And Mandela says, when your life is a struggle, as mine was, there is little room left for family. That has always my, been my greatest regret. And the most painful aspect of choice I made. 
That is Nelson Mandela. Where everybody believed he's the greatest man that ever lived. But a few years before his death, he shared with the world that the greatest regret he had was not taking enough time with his family. His daughter Makaziwe Madera said, he has regrets in life, mostly about his family. He was not there as a father. He tried the best way that he could when he came out of jail. But you understand my, my, that my father came out of jail and was swallowed up even before he became the president. He really, he never really had time to be truly a father. That even after he left prison after 27 years of being away from his family, and the period before he even became the president, there were all these people who needed his time. There is the whole of this world, leaders everywhere who wanted to spend with his time. But the people who missed his time in the 27 years in prison, they missed the opportunity to feel his presence as a father. Makasiwe goes on to say, it is the hard, now Madera almost in his deathbed. It's the hard that he stretches out. It is the touching of the heart that speaks volumes to me. And for me, if you ask me what I would treasure, it is this moment that I treasure with my father. This moment means to me, my child, I am here. It means to me that I'm here, I love you, I care. Just the fact that he could stretch his heart and touch his daughter without even speaking, the daughter had been yearning for those moments since she was born. How many of us are occupied that our jobs have taken our time. Our hobbies and interests have taken all our time. And we have forgotten the one important gift that God gave to us. To be stewards to the children. That may be the most important responsibility that God has given to us. Because I want to believe that one day we shall be asked for those people that I gave you, what did you do with them? I would I want to imagine that I'll line up and I'm behind me and the children behind us. And for us, the only responsibility that we've been given is to bring them to God. We may not, we don't, it's not our responsibility to save them. God's grace is. But we can show them the way. That is not the only person who regretted in life. Listen to Professor Wagari Madhai. The only thing I regret is that I did not spend ample time with my children. The one thing I would probably do differently given another chance is take time off to raise my children. I learned a bit too late that parental responsibilities cannot be delegated. The growth of children is irreversible. Because many a times we have delegated that responsibility 
that when the principal calls for a meeting sometimes I have seen young brothers and sisters the older ones come and present you some other times the house helps have come to represent you in the meetings and other times nobody appears and the child is left waiting to see their mom or their dad. There is nobody who can replace that responsibility that has God, God has given you. It is you who was given the mandate and the powers and the responsibilities and the resources necessary to take care of that child. That's why one day when I went to a different school and I saw that every, almost every parent came and not just the moms because we know moms are the ones who attend meetings but even the fathers were there. Where my daughter is for high school it's a challenge even getting some space because parents flock there in large numbers. And parents take responsibilities. When we decide that we want to motivate the teachers, not the fees, not paying the fees, now additional, we take up the responsibility of motivating the teachers. We don't pay, we don't give 1,000. We don't give 5,000. We give money. And that is how those big schools have made it to remain big. That parents realize this little money that I want to motivate the teacher who is nurturing my child. That money can transform that child to be a doctor who forever the life will change. One of the the, 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 the the chairman of the school, the chairman of the PTA, I call it that because I think nowadays they don't know whether it's still PTA or PA, something like that. Yeah. He was the registrar in one of the universities. And he, he, he was telling us, sometimes you feel mean as you stretch your heart to make life better for your child in high school. And you want to save that money, maybe 10,000 for motivation and for maybe giving the children, like the Valentine's, you know, you know girls, kids, Valentine is a serious affair, yeah? So we buy Valentine cards, cakes, chocolates and so forth. But he told us, if your child comes to the university to take a parallel course, medicine, the fees was 560,000 per year. If they joined by government because they passed well, the fees was 30,000. Do you understand the difference? By simply going an extra mile, reaching out to come and talk to that class A child and tell them you can do it. As parents joining up and saying, these are our children, we need to be there to walk with them this last mile. It can save you the agony of looking for schools. Because when a child has got good marks, schools will be eager to take that child. Bwana Yesu apewe siva. We are called to be stewards of our children. Another parent said, I have paid fees. Why are you involving me in my child's CBC work? 
you want the teacher to take up from morning to evening and for you you want to want to spend how much time with a child the teacher is with your child from 7 in the morning maybe until 4 pm the child is with the house help from 4 pm to maybe 7 pm a new the parent you arrive you come tired fathers what do we normally do you want to lie on the sofa <laughs> you know the, you haven't known what has been happening so the challenging thing happened during covid that now fathers had to be at home and the young children are coming in and father is looking and wondering you are also mine you are so grown i left you when you are a baby because he provides he has no problem in providing but he provides when he's still in his sleep the mom is asking for some money they are they are required i need to buy a shoe and so on get to that jacket and get the money years have passed without spending quality time with the child but covid forced us to retreat back into our houses that is why kwa nyumba kukwa kuna kalika because you come and you fight children that you left them when they were babies and now you are fighting guys who are looking at you and somehow they they are also crooning you know the the voice the bass and you are telling these are also mine <laughs> we have a responsibility to be present because we are the representatives of God in this world in the lives of children so you are the ever present help in time of need of that child that they know mom and dad is is just about Nelson Mandela lost three of his sons out of the six children from the two wives. Out of AIDS. Out of ukimwi. Yes. That tells you when we are not present in our children's life anything can happen. And there are many other stories of CEOs in this country that if you read their lives you be shocked. I don't want to talk about King David. You know David lost three children because he had failed as a father. We know the story of Amnon who raped his sister Tamar. Amnon ambaye alimfanyia matendo mabaya dada yake. And Absalom had to take refuge on behalf of the sister. Na Absalom akakuja kulibisha kisasi kwa sababu dada yake. And although King David was very angry, he never did anything. Hata kama Daudi alikuwa amekasirika hakufanya kitu. Absalom never left that anger and one day he wanted to topple his father's kingdom. Absalom hakuacha ile hasira na wakati mmoja alitaka kugeuza serikali ya babake. And David had really loved this son. Alimpenda sana huyu mwana. They had some guy with long hair. Alikuwa na nywele ndefu mtanashati. But when he started coming to the kingdom. Lakini wakati alianza kuja katika ufalme. David knew how powerful his son can be. Daudi alijua jinsi yule mwanae anaweza kuwa na. And for the first time the mighty king ran away. Na kwa wakati wa kwanza yule mfalme mkuu akatoroka. And you know the mess he did including sleeping with some of his father's concubines? Jua mababa mabaya ambao alitenda pamoja na kula na wake za babake. And later being killed by the commander Joab but instead of david seeing the work that has been done of fighting the rebellion he mourned for a long time until the soldiers wondered did they do the wrong thing and that was not the end because at the very towards his very end when he was sick his other son adonija Adonija mwana wake pia decided he is taking over power on his own. 
kwamba anachukua ushukana na uongozi na mamlaka and he aligned with the commander of the army na akajiweka vizuri na yule kwa moda wa wanajeshi to take over the government ili achukue ile serikali but we see david realizing the last minute lakini tunamuona daudi anagudua wakati wa mwisho and coming in to bless his son solomon anakuja kumbariki mwanae sulemani and he guided him on what he needs to do na kamuongoza mambo ambayo angeyafanya and guiding the and i think i read this that is in first kings 2:1 to 4 wafalme wa kwanza 2:1 to 4 Now the days of David drew near that he should die and he charged Solomon his son saying I go the way of all the earth be strong therefore and prove yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways to keep his statutes his commandments his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn that the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me saying if your sons take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul he said you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel that's what the lord that's what king david commanded his son to do if you give you mfalme daudi alimwamuru mwanae kufanya and from there because god had told him you will not build for me the temple he went ahead and gathered everything that was needed in building the temple and he died in the right stead with god we don't have to wait until we are dying to take charge of our children we can make the choices from the moment they were born yesterday night we were speaking to a group of young guys newly married Two years to about 12 years and i was telling them there are things that you must do as a father because the question i was asking them as a man who do you go to when things are thick do you know you don't have many choices a man must have personal relationship with his god that is the only escape that is the only person you can go to and for you you can only you are the one who will bless your children when they are born it is you who will speak life into their life and it is you who will separate them from all those things that follow a child through the lineage and blood and so forth and i was telling them i have always made sure whenever i go to pray for children that have been born that i want to disconnect anything from the past from the parents both sides and anything from their genealogy that may follow those children so that the child can realize their full potential that God intended for them. Matthew 19 13 to 15 you can put for us. Matthew 19 13 to 15. Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them but the disciples rebuked them Jesus said let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as this when he had placed his hands on them he went on from there bwana yesu asifiwe amina the traditions that we come from is where children are to be seen but not to be heard when the visitors would come when we were young the eye only from your mom would tell you out nature that you cannot do the dairy around there and sometimes The visitors are the ones who would get the best thing. And I kept on wondering, mom, I'm the one who is taking care of this chicken. I am not eating eggs. It's only visitors who get eggs. And like maybe some important visitors, that chicken is chased and it is slaughtered. And I'm asking, 
Mom, you don't slaughter for us. Until to this day, I don't like chicken. <laughs> because when it would be slaughtered, it would be one. And for it to fit the whole, you know, brood of children, yeah? <laughs> a lot of water would be poured for, for soup. <laughs> you know, gadufu, you know? <laughs> And therefore, you ask us to take a piece of ugari, touch the water, or the soup. And that, really, I realized I don't like this. I think I liked more the sheep. Nyandarwa, we, we have sheep, not goats. <laughs> a kodos, yes. Because you'd be given a big chunk of meat and you'd have enough. Children, even in the tradition of the Jews, were mostly also kept away. That is why the disciples did not understand. Parents, you have no shame bringing the children to Jesus. And you know at that time, they still believe Christ was to lead them through the military warfare against the, 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 the Romans. So he was more of their king. And these shameless parents would bring toddlers, some of them with their noses running. But Jesus says, let the children come Jesus cared for them. And even to this day, it doesn't matter the state of your affairs. It doesn't matter whether you have been chased away from every place. Jesus is still saying, come to me. Because we are all his children. And he wants to bless us. That is why he blessed those children. And it was a new knowledge for the disciples. That the king, the one that they had really marveled at the word as he was doing, could hold the children. What can we learn from this? One of the lessons that is important from what we are getting uh, from Christ. That we need to provide an environment that is conducive for the children's growth in Christ. Let us bring them to the church. Sometimes when I go back from church in the estate and I'm normally in the first service, the, ex, the express service. I'm home normally by around 10. And you see some young boys and girls running around in the estate no. playing football and so forth. And sometimes you wonder, what are the parents thinking? These children should be in Sunday school. They should be knowing on how to grow as young Christians. But sometimes we leave the children home, we go to church ourselves. So now come the age that you want to take the children to, uh, to be baptized. Remember some of the mainstream churches. And then after that, you want them now to become followers, to become, you know, members of that church. And the children are finding the church very boring. When they remember, they should be jumping around everywhere, not being seated for two hours. Let us teach them from the moment they are born, the, the moment they come for dedication, support them as they go to Sunday school. Do not think that they are too young to understand. I normally tell people, human beings, we emit certain energy that I can walk in somewhere and a dog can bark at me and they want to bite me. 
But my interpreter, the dog just wags the tail. I can hold a child and the child yells, screams. Well, when he holds the child, the child just wants to sleep. Bring them in this environment. The vibes will make the child know that this is a safe place to be. And, they, and as they grow up, they want to remain in this place. And even when they depart, because that time sometimes comes, and they want to try the things of this world, like uh, someone we listened to Pastor Beatrice preach the other day at Shiro, and, and she was talking about, um, what was that lady's name? Oh, I'm forgetting. Dina. Dina brought up in a family of, you know, the Hebrew family. But one day when she's bored in the house, decides to go and see what the world has. And in the process, she got raped. And the consequence is that the two, the two of, of the brothers went out and killed all the men after circumcising them. Simply, be simply because that young girl decided to go and see what the outside has. Stick to the kingdom of God. That urge to go and see, it looks very nice outside there. The consequences can be dire. My brother, and I'll speak about him, you'll not know among who, who, which one. <laughs> he decided he will not marry a lady from church. They are hypocrites. I don't know what he had seen in our eyes, you know. <laughs> And therefore, he decided to go to the pubs. A young, a young man who had been brought up in church. But in that defiant moment, he decided he wants a wife who will be joining him and having pat patting and so forth. But I will not tell you how many times we were called at night to go and resolve their issues down in Buruburu from here. And you know, one of the main points of argument, my brother was insisting a wife should be going to church. And the wife is asking, where have you taken us? We have refused to go. You are the one who should lead us. You are the man of the house. But my brother believed Wives should be in church so that they can take the children to church. The long story short, they parted ways. My brother came back with his tail between his legs. He's now a member of a church and sometimes it is wonderful listening to him preach. Don't try outside there. Let's bring up our children in the kingdom of God. It is him who ran away from the home. It is not the wife who ran away. It is my brother who ran away. <laughs> because he said his wife was Momo, you know. <laughs> she was big, you know. So, and my brother knew if he sat on by the lady. Let's provide an environment for our children to grow in Christ. Amen. Point number two. Keep bringing them to before Christ, like the parents in this passage. Even when they are fighting the church and they come and they want to write her out, let us still encourage them to be near the house of God. Sometimes they better be making noise outside there. When the spirit is moving, it may just fall upon the children within the compound. 
than when they are jumping when they are outside there and all they are seeing, they are seeing are drunk people because this environment is safe for them. Point number three, we must not attempt to put barriers in their path to Christ. The disciples tried to block the children. And sometimes it is us who broke them from coming to access Christ. How do we do that? The first person who represents Christ in their children in your in your children's life is who? It is the parent. And when they see you, if when you get to the house, there is pandemonium. You abuse even the cat. Everything scatters when they see you coming. They have seen you bribe when you are caught by the police. They have seen you do other things that they wonder, is my dad still a Christian? Is my mom still a Christian? Ninety percent of what the children learn they learn from seeing and doing. Ten percent is only what they hear. So, if you spend time talking to them why they need to know Christ, but yourself you are not representing Christ in your house, you can be sure you are chasing them away the other side. Be the first Christian in your home. The relationships, the way you, 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 you treat even that lady helping you in the house, everything you do they are soaking in they are catching it and you'll be surprised that they will just be like you it is for us to decide how we want to train them from our houses the young people yesterday night I was telling them I would prefer that the first person they hear talking about Christ and God is me. In this pulpit, I have said one day that my dad used to talk about, to teach us about the Bible so much that sometimes I didn't differentiate the stories of the colonial rulers and the Christian teachings. So one day he's giving us a story of Moredekai. You don't know when it is spoken in my mother tongue, Moredekai. And me, I thought he's talking about some of those places he worked during the colonial period. And it took me for a long time to know that Mordecai is actually in the Bible. When I heard a preacher speaking about Mordecai in a barrio. But keep on speaking it whether they get it or not. Because when the time comes, even after they have rebelled and they've done everything, the seeds that you planted in their lives is still growing. And they shall still come and speak about the goodness of the Lord. Number four, be available to our children. And I think I started by talking about that. Dr. Kenyaju Nganga Nowadays he calls himself D.N. Jacobs. He says, you have time for what you value. You have time for your work, but no time for your children. Who said you are the sponsor to your children? You are a parent. Children need time. Time equals love and value. 
na upendo. Let us create time to be with our children. Tufanye wakati wa kuwa na watoto wetu. That when we take leave we purpose to spend our time even if we are traveling even if we are going let's go with them i have seen uh, let me say this i have seen it here a lady is coming to church with three babies and because of the time it takes to prepare the children they cannot come for the express service so she is carrying them you know from the matato she is walking along this route you know one on the back and two on either sides the father came for the express service he says he understands better in the morning. And therefore, the wife comes the second service. So, really, that is where the charge is. And maybe you have not been around for quite a while. But that time that you have, all you want to do, you don't want the baggage of walking around with these babies. A man should be free. There's a brother who was chased away from one of the churches. His brother had given birth. Uh, he, not his brother. His wife had given birth. <laughs> and the brother was available for Monday prayers. Tuesday, he was there for the home cell. Wednesday, he was there for the Bible study. Thursday, he was there for some meeting of, uh, I think it was ushers. And Friday, brother cannot miss a kesha. And Saturday, he's busy coming to clean the church and all that. And praise the Lord, on Sunday, he's there from morning until he's among those who close the doors. And the wife of the pastor asked the brother, didn't your wife give birth just the other day? What are you doing here? Oh my, uh, you know, I love to serve the Lord and to be in his presence. And he said, the first God that you should serve, serve him in your house. You should be wash, washing the, with the child and helping to feed and massaging your wife. He was given out matam. I want to see you when the child comes for dedication. Go and support your wife. That is your first responsibility. So he was speaking how he realized how to first be a father. How to be a husband. And everything else will fall more smoothly. Because the consequence of what he was doing is that most likely the wife would have hated the church. Most likely that child would have also hated the church as they grow up. Because the father is not present. He was a bad influence representing God in an unfair way. We must understand what is our responsibility. And God gives us a time for everything. That was a time for you to be there to support. I'm sure if he just did what was the right thing, not running away from home, he would not have been told to stay away. But now, he was deliberately running away from his wife. Messing up the name of the church. We will not say keep away, but we are saying come and do what you're supposed to do. And I serve in many ministries in this church. But I still know I have a responsibility in that lady. And I have a responsibility in the children. And it is me who will bring them to God even after praying them at home. For them at home. 
Let's represent the church in the right way. It is not the place to run away so that you are not taking up your responsibilities. But we know how to balance our work and not to run away. It is important, and this is the fifth point, it's important to bless your children as Jesus did. For quite a number of years, I would drop my children in the morning. Then in the evening, they come with a bus. And one of the things that we used to do, we would be listening to some of the speakers, you know, the, the, the Zig Ziglar, the Les Brown, um, some of those motivational speakers. We, and I kept on telling my daughter, you are meant for greatness. Walk like a winner. Relate with the others like a conqueror. Because God is on your side. And that we talked about every day. And once I drop her, I would lay my hands on her and pray for her. And when I changed the job and my wife now would take her in the morning. And I would want to believe that they continued in the same path. The young girl continued that way and she passed very well. And she continued. Now she's one of the captains in the school. And when I hear her speak, she speaks the things that we used to speak. Listen, Trey, she wrote to me a letter for my birthday. And she was telling me if, was, if, if there was to be an additional P in the five P's of leadership, the sixth P would be Peter Masharia. <laughs> she, she believed I have guided her the right way. I have introduced her to Christ in a powerful way. I have laid the foundation. And now she says, Dad, I will not embarrass you. I want to continue from what you have been doing. And also be an influence to my classmates. This child in the morning, before they leave your house, speak words that will bless them. That even if they meet a teacher like one I used to have, in the school that yesterday was referred to, it was like a polling station. And the teacher would tell you better your mom could have given birth to, you know, which, to <laughs> Mereo. <laughs> yes. So that the cows can eat because you are useless. You know, one day I made a mistake. The teacher asked in class, who thinks they will go to the university? There was only one hard up of yours truly. And that time, I was really performing very poorly. And I'm saying this, my wife is here. She knows my story. That I would get a zero out of 50 in mathematics. And the teacher would say, if for every question you have failed, you pass by getting beaten. Question number one, until he reaches a point, he says, kemodo kia waira go. Kijana wa, you know when it is said now with the madarao, you, you I know you are coming for everything. So after you are beaten like that he strokes, the others are kept in stock for you. Every day you will be coming to the staff room and I will be giving you six of the best. And sometimes other teachers would come and find a boy lying being gained. 
And they would also decide to join in. And they have no idea why I'm being beaten. The consequence of that is that I became a stammerer. And it was so bad on me for quite a while. But God will always said destiny help us. When I got to class 6, a teacher came and he gave me a chance to read safari book. That is a book we are reading in, for English. There were stories. And I told him, I can't read. The teacher says, we were classmates with your dad. He was very sharp. You must read. So, I started reading. And the other boys and girls were under the desk with the laughter. As I tried to read, it was the story of the mischievous monkey. And I read it as the Miss Jagida's monkey. <laughs> and of course, without a stammering. And I went on. I finished the first story, the first paragraph. Normally, you'd pass the book to the next person to read the, the next paragraph. The teacher says, no, you continue. And I wanted to go under the desk. But I continued reading. And by the time I was going to the fourth and the fifth paragraph, I had started gaining some confidence in myself. The teacher said at the end, you are the one who will be reading us the passages. And I wondered, this guy is sent from hell, you know? <laughs> but I have no idea when I stopped stammering. And I moved from a boy who would never get above 20. I still remember the first day I got 60% in English. Because many thought that I have stolen. Last month I had something where I was stealing. But who is God? The next time I continued. And by the end of that year, the teacher's mission was accomplished. Mr. Kigera left. Class 7. Mr. Kennedy Masharia comes. And he gives us the first quiz in mathematics. And you know mathematics and me? Well, like water and paraffin. Mr. Masharia says, you cannot be called like me and these are the marks that you are getting. And he told me, I'll need to draw a graph. Every marks I get, I must improve. He must see an improvement from the past one. Every time I would drop, there would be canes. And the teacher specialized in me. But I got a determination. And the teacher was good. By the time we were finishing class 7, I was one of the best students in that school. When we did class 8, because I was in the first 8 for 4 group, that, the mocks, I was the best student in that region. People expected I'll get the scholarship that nation was giving for the best people in, in, the, in, the, in the district. But I missed it. They normally say, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. God sent teachers who were destined to help us in my life. And my dad was always very supportive. One day I had moved, I think, from number 98 to about 71. And my dad celebrated me so much, I wondered, Kwani, I have done better than my sister, who was number two. <laughs> that tells you the kind of pupil I was, you know. <laughs> but he never gave up. And he told me, now I want you to move from 71 to 60. And I can tell you, God 
hears. When the parent and the teacher are working together, there's, there's nothing that daughter, that son of yours can't be. Let us support our children. Let us walk with the teachers. Come in and support and don't talk negative things about a teacher at your home. Because I said the child will even pick the negative vibes coming out of you that are not spoken. And they know the attitude you have about that teacher. It took the teacher and my parents to support me to be what I was to become. And it continued on, but I still remember one day my mom told me, Wewe utaguka mugurumo uskike town center. That was in form four. And the reason she said that is because I was not really reading when everybody is seeing. My sister, I have a sister who is my age mate. She's a stepsister. She had been always sharp. She was in Nyadaro High School. And they came together, guys that were in national schools. When I tried to join them, they told me, you may not fit here. That is why I would not, you know, every afternoon my sister would be joining the others as they go to read. And for me, I would be there looking after the cows and all those things. But I knew my time to read. And I normally say, don't force your child to be like you or like anybody else. Your study habits cannot be like your child's. And help your child to understand themselves. Because when the final exam was done in Form 4, in that location, one boy got the marks to go to university. We were only 2,700 people who got B minus and above to go to the university the first and you can tell he was there. That the government had even to lower the marks to start getting Cyprus because there were not enough people to join the university. Because what people see in you, God has a different story. They may be seeing you as a prisoner like Joseph, but God has destined you to be the prime minister. They might be seeing you as a shepherd boy, but God has a different story for you. You are the king. Let them not look down upon you. Don't look upon your child because of their current performance. What God has put in them for you is just to ask God where do you want this boy to go? What do you want me to do with the life of this child? God, you must have placed them in my hands for a listen. Show me how to help them. I recently I was working in a creative in the creative industry. I was in an institution that was dealing with the creative the, the creatives. So the people we were training, they are the, the music producers, the sound engineers, the game developers. The animators, all those who do the 2D and 3D animations. And those kind of courses. And many times I got a chance to speak to parents. And the parents, some of them would come and pull the child out of class. Especially the Muslims. Because they would say, how can my child be a Saudi engineer? They will be working in pubs. And I don't want they are representing the image. They must go and do Bachelor of Business Administration. But then I would get one of my teachers was a medical doctor, a surgeon for seven years in Aga Khan. After being 
a, 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 a doctor for those years. Baada ya kuwa daktari kwa miaka ile. He felt that is not his calling. Akasikia huyo sio mwito wake. He left and became a game developer. Akatoka pale akakuja kutengeneza mambo ya michezo. He was the one heading my department for game development. Yeye ndiye alikuwa anaongoza ile idara yangu ya kutengeneza mambo ya michezo. People are asking. Watu wanauliza. Is, is that a career? Je, hiyo ni taaluma? Yes, it is better than a doctor. Hiyo ni taaluma ambayo ina pesa kuliko udaktari. It is better than a lawyer. Inalipa kuliko hata uwakili. The people who develop the games that your children play. Wale watu ambao wanatengeneza ile michezo watu wa kwanza. Online games are watched by more than 100 million people. Michezo ya pale katika mitandao inatizamwa na watu zaidi ya mamilioni. World Cup is only watched by maximum 60 million. Na mpira wa World Cup ni watu kama milioni 60 wanaotizama. And they have difficult time explaining to parents let the child be. Nilikuwa na wakati mgumu sana kuelezea wazazi mwache mtoto awe. Your role as a parent is to nurture them to be the best that they can be. Guided by God. There is nothing better than a child who is waking than a person who is waking up every morning. To go to work and do what they love doing. They say most people die on Monday morning. Those who die of heart attack. And the reason is because they are going to an office they hate. To a job they hate. And maybe to a boss they hate. And the heart can only arrest them. That has been studies that have been done. But when you are doing what you what you love doing. It is not work. It is just a hobby. You are just being paid to do what you enjoy doing. Help your child to know what they are supposed to do. Work together with the teachers. Like our teachers that you have seen in Cornerstone, you can see what they are able to do. And you will be proud of those children when those days they come and people have to come to your house and book appointments with your son or your daughter. Because God has a promise of in their lives. And God has a got good plan for each one of them. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord help you as you guide your children. And may the Lord guide you as you steward those young boys and girls. Wacheni tusimame. I know some of us could be the young boys and the young girls who Anna. feel misunderstood. Some of us could be teachers that have been harassed by parents. And some of us are parents that we know the things that we have done to our children, we have not steered them to the way of the Lord. But it is never too late to start a new. God is a God of new beginnings. And the moment you commit everything to God, he is able to take us in the right direction. Our precious heavenly father, how we lift up your name and honor you, gracious Lord. Thank you for the responsibilities to be called stewards. And even the honor to hold those children in our hands. Even if we are teachers, we are uncles, we are brothers, and we are parents, our father. Lord, we pray that Father in heaven, for everything that you have done that is not right. To one supporting our children in growth. And growing like Christ grew in wisdom and in knowledge. 
Our Father, we pray for forgiveness. Forgive us this day. Help us, our Father, that we, ad- we may understand your desire for every child's life, King of Glory. We have failed as parents to guide our children. And even to induct them or to instruct them according to your ways. But that, Father, we shall be careful from now henceforth, O God. That we shall take the responsibility that you have given us the way you want us to do. Thank you, gracious Father. Because you never look into our past behavior. You never look into our past failures. If you are willing to start anew, O God. This morning, King of Glory, we commit our children before you. That every morning as they go out, our Father, your heart of protection shall be upon them. That your blessings shall follow them wherever they shall be, O God. And the Lord, as they come back, our Father, may they come back with blessings, King of glory. Thank you, Father, for every parent. Thank you, Jehovah, because we know we are living in some uncertain times, our God. And some parents could be struggling in taking care of their children financially. Those that are trusting you, King of glory, for finances. Lord, we pray that you come through for them. We pray the Lord in heaven, may you heal our country, King of glory. May you heal our nation, Jehovah God. The Lord, the mistakes that we may have done, forgetting our children, that our politicians and even ourselves have been selfish, O oh God, that we have destroyed the posterity for our children, our Father. Father, we pray that you may forgive us. This morning, King of Glory, we also want to pray for our teachers. Father, we thank you for the dedication that we have seen. The commitment that teachers give King of Glory. The long hours that they work, oh God. And the willingness to serve you, King of Glory, in the lives of these children, our Father. Jehovah God, we bless them this morning. We command your blessings upon their lives, King of Glory. That as they take care of our children, Father in heaven, our Father, you will also take care of their children, King of Glory. All their affairs shall be protected of you. Their concerns shall be in, their, in your hands, King of Glory. And the Lord in heaven, they shall come every morning, King of Glory. With a resource for dedication and commitment to their work, O oh God. We want to thank you even for the bishop, the everlasting king. Thank you for the vision, O oh God, that he has, he has for this church, O oh God. And even for the Cornerstone Academy and Julia School, our Father. Father, we pray as he guides us, O oh God, together with Pastor Aris, our Father. That, Father, you will remember them. Keep them in good health, our God. May you prosper them in every waking of glory. That, Father, they shall stay focused to the commitment, our God. And to the calling that you have called them to, King of glory. Thank you for the other pastors, O God. Thank you for the leadership of this church, King of glory. Thank you for the board members of Cornerstone Academy, King of glory. Father, I pray that everybody who is committed to working for the betterment of our children, O God, you will bless them richly, King of glory. We thank you this morning and we honor you. We are also so grateful, King of glory, that you also speak to our children, our Father, that they shall grow in knowledge and in wisdom, our Father, that every word that has spoken about in their lives, O God, the word they have heard from their parents, their teachers, and the pastors, our Father. It shall not go forth in vain, our Father. That they shall start to be counted, our Father. They shall be the remnants, Jehovah God. And they shall live to serve you in the day in their in their in their in their in their old in their old days, oh God. 
Thank you our Father because you shall protect them. And that you shall watch over them every day. We are so so grateful our Father. We love you this morning King of Glory. For this we pray believe and trust in Jesus name.